Who makes the best? Morning people, welcome back to the channel. This I believe being number blah, 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 whatever, I'm not sure, 14 I think now, I'm putting so many out there. This one is predominantly gonna be regarding brands and where they're coming from on the EV marketplace. I've picked the USA, I've picked China, and I've picked the European Union because they are three big players in uh, this ongoing and growing EV marketplace. I'm not mentioning, I'm not gonna do anything to do with Great Britain. I'm not gonna even mention South Korea because, or, or anywhere else in the world because that will be a part two. This is gonna be a part one and I will do a part two to this. Any comments leave below. I know I'm gonna be wrong on certain parts but this is purely my opinion and based on a little bits of a few facts that I know and my experience with EVs. So yeah, let's go forward with this and I hope you like what you're gonna hear and I'll do my best to, to say things that are correct because I ain't always right, folks. Here we go for you. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to start with the USA. One, because it's close to my heart. I've spent a lot of time in the US, as, as uh, some of you subscribers will realize by now. And I have got a USA road trip on the channel. So if you want something to look at for about 30 minutes to, to enlighten you on the southern states of the USA, go view. It's not bad. So yeah, I'm going to start with the USA <clears throat> on this subject of the, the two countries in the area. And I couldn't pick one country out of, uh, obviously out of the European Union, because there isn't one that stands out. So I've done it as the EU against China and against the USA. I'm going to start with the USA, like I say, because uh, I, I do believe that overall, uh, and I'm not saying now at this particular date, but I would say by the end of 2021, this year and well into next year, I think the USA are going to be well up there with some of the best, most prestigious cars EV wise in the world. And I'll start with one that sticks out straight the way. Um, I've got to admire the company. They start from startup. It's a full EV car loads of money have gone into this and that's lucid uh with the lucid air if you've never seen one go google it um i would love to do a review on a lucid chances are i'm never going to see one in the uk for many many months if not years yet very expensive car i agree the top end is around 115 120 thousand dollars us over here by the time it hits i would i would guess it's going to be a hundred thousand pound minimum but it's full of the best tech it's a 1,000 brake horsepower car. It is super quick. I think three seconds is quoted, 0 to 60 or under. Um, the ride quality is superb and all the reviews so far of the uh, post-production have been tremendous. It is out there on Google. So just if you want to irritate what I'm, what I'm saying and, and think for yourself uh, on what you feel about Lucid, go Google, go Google. You'll find them out there. Moving on to Ford. Ford again, obviously we all know, big USA company with the Mac E, which I believe is behind me there on that wall. Um, the Mac E is, in my opinion, going to be a, a good little car or good, a, a decent sized SUV for Ford. Um, a lot of people out there are calling it saying it's not a Mustang, and I appreciate that. I've been a Mustang owner, right? See that one there? I've been a Mustang owner for 
over 40 years. There's nobody out there watching this now, and I'll blow me on trumpet on this one, can tell me anything about the Ford Mustang, how it's been, what it's done for the USA, how it's done for motoring worldwide. But they are the first to turn around, these so-called non-Mustang owners who think the Ford Mustang's super duper, well, I know it's got a lot of faults, um, call the, the, uh, the Mustang Mach-E. It ain't a Mustang, it's a bloated SUV, blah, blah, blah. If Ford wanna say it's a Mustang, it's a Mustang. That's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, Ford make it, Ford put the money in, and Ford selling it. Uh, marketing people are not dumb. They know exactly what they're doing, and they're playing on that Mustang brand, and the best look to them, and I hope it sells for them. Uh, I've, I've sat in one, I've stood next to one. Um, I'll put this picture up in a minute. Um, and yes, great car in my opinion, and it should do really well for Ford. Rivian are my next people to mention, USA uh, stateside. Rivian is going to be making possibly the quickest, the longest range, and the most prestigious pickup truck in the world. Um, Rivian was part of the Long Way Up, uh, which was an Apple TV production, which I've not watched all the way through yet, uh, which had some great reviews um, with two bikers that went up on, on electric bikes as well. I believe they were Harleys. Don't quote me on that. Uh, and the two Rivian pickups followed them all the way up behind them. Yeah, a few minor faults, but they, these were, again, these were non-production cars. These were test vehicles. But yeah, did they do well? Well, the Rivian's a great pickup. Uh, so far, I like everything about it. Then about, not, not about the front lights. I'm still not drawn 100% to them, but some of the functionalities it's got and, and the, the range and everything else that is out there and the power and the speed and the versatility of the thing. Brilliant, what an RV. I tell you what, if you're after a pickup truck and you've got the money, and I think they will start, once they, even in the US, I think they're gonna start at around $75,000. Um, these are ballpark prices I'm chucking out there. But wow, what a pickup. And then you've got the F-150 from Ford, which again, you've got to remember the USA is the biggest pickup marketplace in the world. And um, I spend a lot of time in the Southern States. Every other vehicle is a pickup truck. So Ford have got a few things to answer to, and I think they'll go forward in the EV marketplace, not a problem. Rivian, yeah, excellent. And obviously the first one we spoke about, Lucid. Um, the other one I, I will mention, um, Tesla set standards in the USA and I think worldwide, and I think they still are. I, I do believe they are two to three years ahead of anybody else in the EV game uh, with range, speed, Build quality was an issue in the very first ones in 2013, 14, uh, gaps and everything else. And even now, now and again, they let themselves down a bit by showing a bit of, a uh, tiny bit of down quality. Um, but they're getting there, things are getting better. The uh, big factory now, which is set up in China, which I won't mention because that goes against the USA, in my opinion, uh, is doing very well and selling shed loads in, in China. Probably, I think it's the best selling EV still in China itself. But anyway, back to the USA. Tesla are setting standards, uh, three or four models out now. Uh, this time next year, there should be a smaller model around the $20,000 margin with a 200 plus mile range. I can't knock Tesla for what they've done. I think Elon Musk has put a lot of money into things and I know he got a massive grant from the US government and I don't think it's ever been paid back. Maybe wrong there. Some Tesla fan tell me that. But no, things are what they are. Tesla, you cannot deny, have set standards and those standards are still going up and up and up. And I think most of China and most of Europe, and if not the rest of the world, aim to beat Tesla. There's a lot of Tesla haters out there, but hey look, if I had the money, I'd have one tomorrow, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, wouldn't even bother me if it was the lowest spec one going there. Um, I would like the, the better one, the ludicrous, the, the ultimate, but that's a lot of money. But no, I think now used are coming down here in the UK. I think you can get a used Model 3 now for about 34, 35,000 pounds with very low mileage, uh, maybe a year old. So yeah, they're coming down to my money, um, but I'll wait till that small one comes out, I believe in, in 2022, and then take a serious look and maybe even put a down payment on one, but we'll see. So yeah, USA got it all going for them, I'm afraid at the moment, which is great news for, you know, if you're an American uh, entrepreneur and you're putting many, money into USA made EVs. So that's the way forward with the USA. Uh, and now I believe we ought to delve on to China. China and its EVs. Um, booming is the word. Uh, making the most EVs 
in any one country in the world at the moment. Um, they have the capacity to do this. They have um, the manpower to make things cheap. And that's another thing I will say about Chinese EVs. Cheap is the word. I'm not saying that the um, production is cheap. Uh, and I must admit for the last couple of years, people like Xpeng and Neo have got better and better in quality. Um, most European journalists that have been across there and had a play in a sit in an Xpeng or a Neo, uh, especially in the, the 20s, late 20s and uh, early 21s, have been very, very impressed. Um, they have stole a bit of tech, if that's the word to use, stole from Tesla. Um, in another variant, they've not copied it 100%, but obviously they've looked at a Tesla and thought, mm, we can do this. And if you look at the latest Xpeng, uh, it is like that, it is very much like a, a Tesla. Um, big tablet in the middle, they set the standards as you all know. Neo, um, if you want to put your money in an EV up and coming company uh, and you can get in there cheaply and do it, then think of Neo and Xpeng. Um, worth a couple of grand gamble, ain't going to be short term, but in the long term I think they will be definitely out there for world domination and I think they will do very very well on smaller, more compact EVs um, that are very cheap. And that's a massive marketplace in China and uh, in Asia in general. Not so much here, I believe. Um, I, I still believe that most people wouldn't be seeing a little tiny box um, that looks a bit ugly. Um, you know, the quality's not there just to go from A to B in an EV with, say, a 60 mile range. That's already been tried by Smart in this country and it didn't work that well for them. And anybody who's not willing to go forward and make range better now in a more modern EV will not last. You need range. I'm not a big believer in it. I think you can get by with a 150 mile in the UK, stop at a charger. And I know there's charging issues in the UK at the moment, but things are going to obviously only looking better. Um, as regards China and its world domination, I'll go back to that. I do believe that they will be making some mass produced cars. I believe in Norway at the moment, they just took a load of uh, Neos and Xpengs in there. And the marketplace says, yes, they're selling. So right price, right vehicle, right range. Um, they're not as good as Tesla and Rivian and even Ford at the moment for the range, although they do a top mark one, which will do around 400 mile, I believe, uh, X-Pen. Um, flipping that coin straight on its back. Great Wall had a problem in, the, in Australia where they used asbestos gaskets and Australia's got this asbestos ban. And as an example, they sent these pickups across there to sell them, which weren't the greatest pickup by a long way. Uh, found out they had the asbestos in the engine gaskets and they banned them. And this is where the, the world's going. Things have got to be right, people, for you to, to sell um, in certain parts of the world. You might get away with it in your hometown and in Beijing or whatever in China, but not for the world marketplace. Uh, and this is what China's got to do to make sure that things are okay to sell a cheap version of a car, be it a pickup, SUV, or even a motorhome, which will be the next thing along the way. Um, so yeah, that's China done in a, uh, in a nutshell. Um, the only thing I will say is, uh, just to finish off, and I forgot about these, and that's MG. MG uh, have been selling across in the UK now since 2018 as a full EV. It is, they got the price right from day one. I think it was 24,995 or something of that region, brand new in the showroom for an SUV that holds five people, two or three large suitcases, in the summer will give you 180 mile range. Came with a 43 kilowatt battery pack, I believe. Um, not the best looking thing in the world and a bit plasticky on the inside, but hey, um, it was priced good. And even now you can get one of those things at two years old down to as low as 18K, which is a great used buy. MG battery packs have not been proved yet. So let's see where it goes for them in the next two to three years regarding their battery packs. If they start failing miserably, um, similar to what the early Nissans did, degrading, uh, that will not be very well took uh, in the EV marketplace. And I think it will hit and hurt MG. So <clears throat> if they get that right in the next three years, and I think that MG could be a major player from China in the UK. There is a new model coming out, I believe late this year, which looks quite nice, uh, far better interior, software's better, because the software was a bit glitchy in the early ones. Um, there's an estate version out now as well, which you can buy, which is just based on the same as the SUV. So I wouldn't rush out to buy that, but wait for the new one. Go take a look at an MG dealership when the new one comes out end of this year and it might pleasantly surprise you. So yes, MG major player. Um, I see it, Xpeng, Neo, MG, 
probably the Great Wall Group as the four major players out of China. There'll be a lot of startups just in the same as the US and there'll be a lot of failings. So, but I think that's your four. Okay, moving on to Euroland of the EU, the European Union. Again, from the onslaught, I said that I haven't mentioned um, the UK as part of that. Nothing to do with Brexit, people don't have a crack. Um, I haven't mentioned uh, Britain because that's going to be a part two in this game, along with South Korea and other countries that produce any EVs. Um, but for now, I'm going to stick at uh, the three. And this is the third one, the EU. Now, the EU have been making electric cars for quite a while now. Um, I'll give Renault their due. They did actually come up with some quirky cars back in the day, the Twizy and whatever. Um, but they also made the Zoe. Now, the Zoe, even from day one, in my opinion, was quite a, a nice little funky car. Um, didn't need anything. It, it, it did what it said on the can, 22 kilowatt battery pack. Uh, if you're looking at one now, you could pick one up for less than £5,000 as long as you want to work with that horrible battery lease. You can buy that out for about two and a half grand. So it's going to, you could get one for seven and a half grand with the battery owned, low miler, good looking car. Uh, as you see in the pics at the intro, intro of this thing here, uh, the, the E208, uh, good looking car, good looking car. Looks lovely from the front, uh, nice interior, put together well by Peugeot. The problem is it is not strictly a full EV. It's, it's, it's a derived version from the ICE car. At least Renault have made a full electric in the Zoe and even the Twizy. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know why Peugeot haven't come up with a full EV yet. And hopefully next, this time next year, there will be a, a full ground up EV. Similar to what BMW have done, of course, again, another European one. Um, BMW with the i3, which I drive at the moment, and I think it's a great little car. Uh, if you want a, a quick go-kart with a bit of space and four adults, it ain't a bad car at all. Um, the i8 was a bit OTT. It looked the part, looked a gorgeous design, but never kind of appealed to the masses. Price obviously was number one. Secondly was the fact that it's strictly a two-seater and hardly any luggage space. Um, and no, too bit too quirky, a bit too sporty for the most, for the majority. Um, so yeah, you've got Renault, you've got BMW, and you've got Peugeot. Um, Audi, of course, that have got the e-tron, but I'm not gonna mention Audi because the e-tron to me, for the money you pay, the range you get back out of it and everything else has not got a great press. It, it, it's very, uh, I won't say average, because that'd be a, a lie. It's not a, a brilliant EV. It's a, it's okay, but I wouldn't buy one myself. I, that's, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't even look at any Audis. Never been a big Audi fan. Volkswagen, on the other hand, have come out with the ID3 and on the same platform, the ID4. The ID3 is a bit bland inside to me and looks quite cheap in that, I, I've seen them in like a beigey white, they look a bit cheap. Now I know you can slam the doors and you get the same sound as you would do all traditional golf, but don't get the golf mixed up with the ID3. It's not. It, it, it is, you know, it is a ground up electric vehicle for them. Uh, but let's jump to the ID4. The ID4 has just come out now. It's slightly bigger in size than the ID3. It's got a, a good future in the in Europe and probably will sell okay. Not in masses because again, it's price. But um, I'm going to jump back here and throw something in the book. If you put it up against, say, the Model Y, the Tesla, similar in price, similar in size, um, similar in the way they've been built for a family vehicle. <clears throat> and I think you'll find, if you look at all the details and specs, folks, that the Tesla, ballpark price in here, uh, and depending on what spec you go for, but the Tesla Model Y is better on range. It's got more cubic feet or liters, as they call them nowadays, in the boot area with the seats down and up. Um, it, it's quicker by a long way. So if you want a bit of a sportier car, the Model Y is not a sports car, but it is quicker. So straight away, you've got the speed aspect, you've got the range, and you've got the, the boot space, even with the seats down, for a family of four. And I believe the, the tech on the Tesla is far superior to the tech on the Volkswagen. The Volkswagen inside is very, you know, one there, one there, there your clusters. Whereas the Tesla, boom, you've got the big tablet. Yes, the, mod, the, the Model Y outdoes the ID4 in all aspects, in, in my opinion. 
Some will say the ID4 has better build quality. The gaps are superb, who knows? I've not got near one yet, and I, I, knowing Volkswagen, it probably will be a very well-made piece of kit. But let's face a few facts here. They've had some real bad press with the diesels and diesel gate and all the rest of it over the last uh, five years or so. The EVs coming out of, of, of uh, Europe are, are very good. Uh, the only, this is where I, I, they fall flat on the, the backside. The range is one. You've got the odd Audi top end, like I've said before, the e-tron, which has not got a bad range. But most are good for around 150 to 200 mile, absolute maximum in the summer. That's your, that's your E208 in, in real world mileage. Um, and for the money you're paying at, um, without grants, nearly 30,000 for the top specs, it's a lot of money for a car that you cannot do 200 mile and only will zoom down to about 150 mile range in the winter. And I know I'm making a big thing about range. Peugeot's got a, a bad press for build quality in its past years, but let's hope that they get better. And I know they are, because the E208, is a, like I've said, is a, is a nice car. Um, BMW, I'll, I'll slink back slightly. Everyone knows that BMW is quite good for its build quality. Um, always had a good press. Um, but no one's said a good word about their latest uh, EV, the Model 3 thing, um, the 3 Series, should I say, that's now uh, electric. Some say it looks a bit weird at the front. Some say it's not as great as it should have been for the money. So if you want a, if you want a BMW at the moment, I would still say uh, jump for um, the i3. <clears throat> Small, easy to park, gets four adults in it. And I still believe it's probably one of the best EVs to come out of Europe so far, if you can put up with its quirkiness and its funkiness. So that's um, the Europeans, um, and I do believe that if you're European, you'll end up just buying a European EV, purely because of the trust factor, the dealership that you've got and everything else, and a lot of people won't consider a Chinese or even an American, purely because you've got a domestic market already there for you in Renault and Peugeot and others coming on board, and Volkswagen and BMW. To round it all up will be hard. To take sides will be hard. Uh, and I know you're all going to say it's going to come out USA, but the future is going to change. I mean, you'll look at this video in two years and go, Kev, you got it wrong. And I probably will be wrong because of the way that batteries are going to change, battery pack styles, sizes, range, and everything else. There is, it's, it's a massively changing market. So I might be eating my own words within two to three years. But as we speak now, this is how I see it. Okay, as you can see, I'm sitting back a bit further now. Uh, away from you, expecting a big fallout of slaps around my face. Um, <laughs> this is how it is. One, two, and three. So, yeah, you were right. Number one, I'm going to go USA. And this is why I'm going to jump USA. Um, I give them a big tick on range. You cannot deny that Tesla has set standards. And even for his base model now, uh, the standard Model 3, Okay, 40K in this country, um, brand new. But let's face it, you will get 200 miles in the winter. You'll get 260 in the summer. And that's the basic. The best can go a lot more. And my God, things are gonna change dramatically with Tesla. When the Tesla truck comes on board with the bigger battery packs, the new battery versions come on board. And Tesla's a major player. So that they've had a massive points gain from me. And that's why I've jumped for the USA. Um, second one, being, um, I would say prestige. Let's jump for the prestige side of it. I do believe that the, the American marketplace will be uh, not full, but it will have at least four, maybe five major players making some prestige EVs over the next two to four years. GM have got the Hummer coming out, which is, wow. Um, but that won't be here officially and in production and for sale until the end of this year, really. So GM are gonna be, spot on and let's face it GM are going to be dropping all fossil fuel cars within the next two to four years so by 2025 I think the whole complete range will be EV orientated uh, and not commercial wise but personal transportation so let's see what they do, they do there um, so the Hummer has to be looked at as a tremendous pickup Rivian outstanding I hope Rivian do very very well and I do believe that will be the, the pickup to be in the world class beta um, and even the big oil producing countries like Saudi um, will be buying the Rivian. Trust me, because they'll love it. Being electrical or not, and I know they produce all the oil or most of the oil in the world still, and it's their major input. 
but trust me, it will, it will be selling to uh, as a world-class leader. Uh, Lordstown, I don't know yet, let's see on that one. But again, the Hummer, you'll see that in Saudi all over the place in full EV form uh, and uh, or, all over the Arab lands. Um, they love their American vehicles out there. So yeah, on prestige, on looks as well, because I think design concepts of these are, are stunning things at the moment out of the US. The only thing I will say that goes against it, and I nearly pulled back uh, and went for the other country I'm gonna mention second, is pricing. Pricing on American EVs at the moment, and I foresee the next two to three years is expensive. Until Tesla comes out with his new model, I think they'll still be expensive, especially when you put the taxes on and go across to the UK and into Europe, um, which is a great shame. But yeah, pricing does go against the American EV at the moment, but things will get better. Um, so yeah, number one, in my opinion, who's making the best, most prestigious and the best range and the best looking has to be the USA. Number two has to be, I'm going to say, the EU, the European Union. I was so near going for China as being number two, but I just feel they're still behind everyone else regarding world marketing. Um, because that's, I'm speaking now, not in three years time, which would be frightening for a lot of manufacturers if they get what they are aiming for, but I'm talking now. So yeah, I'm about to jump for the European Union. Overall, I think the European Union cars are better for their home markets than the Chinese ones at the moment. I'm not saying it's that it's, they couldn't be bettered, and my God, they could. Come on, Peugeot, come on, Renault, get that range right, get that, get that vehicle out that's doing 300 mile plus in the winter, you know, because that's your next step. Um, give us a prestige car. And I'm not, I've not mentioned Volvo uh, in this bec because they might be part of part three. I'll give you a bit of a clue there. Um, and although it's European Union, I've kept, I've kept Sweden and, and the Scandinavian countries out of it. Um, but yeah, uh, Polestar, what I'm aiming for um, but I will mention them in in part two um, but going back to the European Union now yeah I'm, overall they make some good cars so they suit their own marketplace but China trust me who are number three will be over here kicking butt very very soon if they get their marketing right and Neo and Xpeng are the two to watch so number three China China for me um, I'll, I'll go back to what I've said in a few bits of this previously. China for me are after world domination. And I think they won't be far off unless the US can kick butt and come back with some cheaper vehicles. On price alone, this is, and, and it's only on price that betters everywhere. Price alone, China's got it right. Um, quality, they're nearly there. Um, marketing, they're a bit behind. I think the marketing valuations, uh, the, the marketing can be a, done a lot better. It doesn't impress a lot of uh, US customers and it doesn't impress a lot of European customers who still think China is cheap and cheerful. Well, on their auto uh, cars, on their transportation, um, they're not cheap and cheerful anymore. They've got it right and it's getting better. Yeah, so China is number three. So there you go. One USA two European Union, three China. And hey, European Union, you only just won that one because if China was selling in the UK now or into Europe with one exceptional car, I'd have given it to China. But there you go. There you go. What do I know? Anyway, people, that's wrapping this up. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you put a bit of, uh, you know, thought process in there over a weekend. I apologize for being on my own again and ranting. I haven't got the guys here and the lads and the lasses uh, and, and you know, it, it's still COVID times. But I appreciate everyone who's joined the channel. Um, please subscribe if it's the first time you've been on board. Uh, loads more to come, I keep saying this every time. So subscribe and give me the thumbs up and the likes and I appreciate everybody who's subscribed so far. It's small, but it's growing and we're getting there. Uh, so come join the club, as they say. There you go. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Keep safe, people. Let's get past this COVID times and get out there and have some more fun.
Happy days. Look after yourself.